overtime to the Winnipeg Jets. This game was a team loss as Arvid Soderblom had his best game of his career in tonight's action and yet the Hawks cannot prevail as they lose in overtime 2-1. to one. Yeah, this game was at one point uh, going to be Soderblom's first career shutout in the National Hockey League. But it comes in the final minute of play where hell breaks loose for the Chicago Blackhawks. Soderblom played phenomenally, uh, just phenomenal for your Chicago Blackhawks. But frankly, the team can only score one goal against Connor Hellebuck. You need to score more than one goal to win if you're right now with this team because you're the Blackhawks who could not score goals last year. And right now, we only have three goals on this season. And, well, we it's only a one goal difference in this one. Uh, shots on goal, 26 to 25 uh, to 35 in favor for the Winnipeg Jets. Face-off percentage, this was where what broke the Hawks in this game. 36% of the draws for the Chicago Blackhawks to the Jets of uh, 64%. Power play, each team for it went 0 for, 0 for 1 for the Hawks on the power play, 0 for 2 for the Jets on the power play. Hit 17 to 13 in favor for the Blackhawks. And block shot 16 to 10 in favor for the Hawks. Yes, the Jets were putting on the pressure in the third period of play. As this shows in the stats, shots per period, 6 to 7 in favor for the Jets in the first, 11 to 11 in for the shots in the second, 8 to 16 in favor for Winnipeg, and 1 to 1 for Winnipeg in the overtime. Total shots again, 26 to 35 for the Winnipeg Jets. The Hawks had to kill a couple penalties where they did well in this game. They looked good on the PK. Power play only generated one shot, but it did generate some momentum in this game. But the main issue is the Hawks cannot hold on to the lead late in this game. It goes to overtime. They lose a faceoff and they lose it. That's how it goes. First period of play, it remained scoreless. Where We saw a lot of chances each way, but in the first period, Soderblom stood strong. So did Hellebuck. And we go to the second period of play where it pretty much was a standstill still in this second period. Where it takes late into the period, about uh, 15 minutes into the play of the second period where we saw some action on the light. The Hawks were battling hard, but they weren't battling enough when it comes to the end of this game. I need to mention. In the second period, though, Soderblom stood strong, and the Hawks were able to prevail out of the second period because at 16.52 in the second period, scored by number eight, Ryan Donato, his first of the season, assisted by number 77, Pat Maroon, to make it a 1 0 lead for the Chicago Blackhawks at 16 52 in the second period of play. Maroon feeds the puck off the boards, and Donato gets it and beats Hellebuck low blocker side. And the Hawks lead 1-0, taking this 1-0 lead into the third period of play. But in the third period of play, we knew the Jets were going to put on a lot of pressure. And they do. Hawks were able to kill it off quite a bit, but it comes in the final minute of play. With a minute and four seconds in regulation, Mark Shifley breaks the shutout for um, Arvid Soderblom for his first of the night, second of the season, assisted by Ehlers at with 104 remaining in regulation time. What happens? Hawks lose a faceoff in the defensive zone. Jets take advantage of it. Puck was bouncing up, and Shifley 
puts it in to make it a 1-1 game. So now we have overtime. Hawks win the opening faceoff, and it was Tara Vinen, Bedard, and Jones to start the overtime, and they only stay out there for 30 seconds after the puck goes into the defensive zone for a defensive faceoff. And, well, the Hawks put out Khrushchev, Hall, and, well, it's a bad face-off draw for Khrushchev. Bad breakdown for the Hawks. And Mark Shifley, who just tied the game, and in a matter of 30 seconds into the overtime, at 38 seconds, Mark Shifley buries it for his third of the season, second of the night assisted by Connor and Morrissey to make it a 2-1 loss for the Chicago Blackhawks. My issues are the Hawks' face-offs were what caused this team the victory and late action. That's what caused it. The team put out the wrong people out there for the face-offs. In the overtime and in the final minutes of play, you should have had more of a smarter structure for face-off percentage because you're playing against the Jets who have good centermen. And, well, the Hawks, yeah, they don't. And they find a way to blow Soderblom's best game of his career. That's how it was. Arvid played his best game in the National Hockey League tonight, and they lose it 2-1 to one in overtime. That's on the team, not on Soderblom. He played phenomenal. The Hawks is up front of him, collapsed in the final minutes of play. So down in the comments down below, I want to hear what your thoughts are, and thank you for watching the broadcast. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're, you haven't done so already. And we're back at it again tomorrow night in Edmonton.